the way that so many prominent voices have focused so exclusively on colleges feels honestly a bit decadent to me. Like we're doing a, a paper doll version of the conflict because the actual reality of what's happening in Gaza is so horrific, unceasing and high stakes. It's more enjoyable to argue about what college kids are doing than to confront the human misery and destruction that's happening in the actual conflict. That is, of course, the source of these protests. The only crime I can see that 65 year old tenured professor committing is maybe sneaking a Brazil nut from the co-op's <laughs> bulk section. Also, that woman is not only Jewish, she's a professor of Jewish studies, yet she's being brutalized by police supposedly there to keep Jewish people safe. So I think that the tide is officially starting to turn when it comes to this narrative pushed by mainstream media about campus protesters. And that's because these pundits got a little bit too sloppy in their desperation, right? So as a result, the propaganda has fallen apart and it's now starting to blow up in their faces. Now, just to give you a couple of examples of the most outrageous examples of these mainstream news pundits smearing these protesters, we have CNN's Dana Bash disgustingly comparing these protesters who are protesting a genocide, by the way, to literal Nazis. Now, ironically, many of these students that she's calling Nazis are Jewish themselves. Nonetheless, that didn't stop her from lying about them. Now, on top of that, MSNBC hosts have compared these student protesters to January 6th insurrectionists and Charlottesville neo-Nazis. MSNBC also brought on a police officer to fearmonger about the bike chains used by protesters that the university literally sells. And of course, there's the terrorism book that the NYPD supposedly found, which they pretended was some sort of a how-to guide when in actuality it was just an academic book about terrorism obviously it was found on a campus what do you expect i mean we're seeing idf levels of low effort propaganda at this point but generally speaking a lot of the things that mainstream media pushes with regard to these protesters you know there's a lot of gray area they leave open questions and it requires additional research but a lot of the bullshit they've been peddling is just absurd on its face and when your lies become so hyperbolic and fantastical there's a certain point to where it becomes counterintuitive right where we don't just doubt the message itself because it's so absurd we doubt the the messengers too. And we're at that point with regard to campus protest propaganda. And on top of that, millions of people are now seeing a counter narrative from the likes of John Oliver making fun of their lies on his massive television show. And also Chris Hayes is reminding everybody that college protesters have a history of activism. So this is nothing new. They're not terrorists. And historically, student activists have been on the right side of these issues. But on top of that, we have Seattle rap artist Macklemore, who just released a viral song called Hins Hall, and he is choosing to un Equivocally stand in solidarity with not just the student protesters, but Gazans who are under siege right now by Israel. And he also called out other artists for not saying anything about this issue. And I can't play the song for you, but I do want to read you some of the lyrics because I think that what he says here is really important and it's helping to dismantle the bullshit that we're seeing from politicians and pundits. So here's some of the lyrics. Actors and badges protecting property and a system that was designed by white supremacy, but the people are in the streets. You can pay off Meta, but you can't pay off me. Politicians serve by any means. APAC, KUFI, and all the companies. You see, we sell fear around the land of the free, but this generation here is about to cut the strings. You can ban TikTok, take us out the algorithm, but it's too late. We've seen the truth. We bear witness. Seen the rubble, the buildings, the mothers and the children, and all the men that you murdered. And then we see how you see spin it. He continues, where does genocide land in your definition? Destroying every college in Gaza and every mosque, pushing everyone into Rafah and dropping bombs. The blood is on your hands, Biden. We can see it all. And fuck no, I'm not voting for you in the fall undecided. Yeah. So these lyrics are incredibly powerful. It resonated very deeply with me. And um, it really dawned on me after listening to this song that they're losing the propaganda war. I already thought that mainstream media was losing the propaganda war with respect to their effort to manufacture consent for Israel's genocide and our support for said genocide. But it dawned on me after listening to this that they're also losing the propaganda war that they've been waging against these student protesters because up until this point, it was overwhelming and it felt like we kind of lost when it comes to that. But no, they're losing the propaganda war. And um, this song, by the way, hasn't even officially been released on Apple Music or Spotify, but yet it's already gone viral just on Twitter alone. And that's really important because when it is officially released, how many more millions of people are going to hear this message and then question what they've been hearing in mainstream media, question what Biden has been doing? 
I think this is really, really significant here and credit to Macklemore for doing this. Now, if I didn't mention this before, the name of the song is Hins Hall, which is the name that student protesters gave to the building that they took over at Columbia University. And they named it after Hind Rajab, which is a six-year-old Palestinian girl who was murdered by Israel after she initially su survived tank fire that killed all of her family. She was the sole survivor and then they killed her. Just brutal stuff. So the fact that her name is getting out there because of these protesters, because of Macklemore, that is so important. Now, on top of that, Macklemore said that he'll be giving all of the profits from this song to UNRWA, and he even got praise from Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine, who says, honestly, Macklemore's Hins Hall is the most Rage Against the Machine song since Rage Against the Machine. And that is an incredible compliment to give to Macklemore from Tom Morello. Now, it might seem like a single song and a couple of new segments are insignificant, but I promise you, it's not. It's very significant because this is how culture changes. You know, I'm just one person and there's a lot of us in independent media who try to debunk these mainstream media narratives. But I mean, let's be honest, I could debunk these lies about protesters every single day on this channel until I'm blue in the face. But having a large platform doesn't automatically translate into meaningful influence or cultural power. So when people like John Oliver or Macklemore say what I'm saying, that actually does make a really significant impact, right? It moves the needle, and I think that that's important. And I say this because as much as we don't like to admit it, our opinions are heavily influenced by other people. It's human nature, right? So the media is very much aware of this fact, and they're able to effectively ascribe our default position on any issue to us by simply setting the narrative and framing and elevating the salience of a particular issue. So, I mean, when Dana Bash on CNN compares these students to Nazis, that might sound suspicious to the average person, but odds are they'll just accept it at least a little bit until they hear a counter narrative, which is why these counter narratives getting out there is so crucial right now, right? Which is why people like John Oliver and Chris Hayes going against the grain is so fucking important right now. But I do want to get back to the Chris Hayes clip that we saw at the beginning of this video because what he said is particularly important. He said the media focuses on what college students are doing because it's easier to do that than to confront the actual reasons why these students are protesting in the first place. That is very, very true. And that's what we have to keep in mind because Israel is now beginning their offensive in Rafa and an already bad situation is about to get exponentially worse. And if you've been online like me, the images are, you can't describe the images, right? Seeing the images, they stay in your mind. It's shocking. We're talking about little kids who have been murdered by Israel, seeing their lifeless bodies and their parents and their siblings grieving. I will never get that out of my head. Now, what I want to do is play a TikTok for you that gives you a visual of what Gazans have been experiencing. There's nothing graphic about this, but it kind of demonstrates what they've been dealing with since the start of Israel's incursion into Gaza and how they've basically been cornered now into Rafah. So just watch this and then we have more to talk about when we come back. Remember when they told everyone to move down south? It's going to be safe down south. Watch. The crazy part is, I showed you guys this 135 days into this genocide. We are 80 more days into this genocide, and we are literally witnessing the same thing. Close to 40,000 innocent people have been murdered. Tens of thousands are still under the rubble. And now everyone's here, down in the south, in Rafa, and they're bombing Rafa. There are over 1.5 million innocent Palestinians that have been displaced in the south of Gaza, in Rafah, right here. Over 600,000 of them are children. The aid, the food, the waters, all in that area. And now Israel's indiscriminately bombing this area. Now, mind you, all of these people are living under tents. They're indiscriminately bombing this area, dropping leaflets from the sky, telling them it is no longer safe to be there. They have to leave. Where are they supposed to go? Literally, where are they supposed to go? There is nowhere else for them to go. How can you look at this visual demonstration and not call this a genocide, not call this an ethnic cleansing, not call for a ceasefire? So we need you now more than ever to keep posting, keep sharing, and do not stop talking about Palestine.
man, I just can't figure out why our government wants to ban TikTok so bad. Oh, wait, they actually confirmed that we were right all along. And this is really just about the pro-Palestine content that they don't want us to see on there. So, I mean, at least they're no longer pretending that this was about protecting our data or some bullshit. This was always about stopping us from getting the truth. Right. But Israel has officially began their offensive into Rafa and dozens of innocent civilians, including children, have already been murdered. And we can't get official numbers at this point because the capacity for people in Gaza to keep track of the death toll has been eliminated. So we don't even know. We see anecdotes, but we don't get a bigger sense as to what's really happening. We just know that it's destruction. Right. Indescribable description, uh, destruction. And. This comes after Hamas agreed to a ceasefire deal negotiated by Egypt, Qatar, and the United States that would have facilitated the release of some Israeli and Palestinian hostages. But Israel said no because they don't want this to stop. Netanyahu personally needs to drag this out as long as he possibly can in order to stay in power and protect his own ass because the second that this is over, well, the country is going to want an election and he's going to lose that election. He's going to lose power and possibly be in trouble, legally speaking, for all of his crimes, not just against Gazans, but because of the crimes that he's committed with regard to corruption in Israel. But as a result of this offensive in Rafa, it seems like the Biden administration is finally maybe choosing to pull the plug on them, at least for now. Politico reports, quote, the Biden administration is holding up shipments of two types of Boeing-made precision bombs to send a political message to Israel, according to a U.S. official and six other people with knowledge of the deliberations. While the Biden administration has not formally denied the potential sale, it is essentially taking action through inaction, holding off on approvals and other aspects of the weapons transfer process to send a message to Israel, a U.S. administration official familiar with the process told Politico. The official, along with others, was granted anonymity to discuss sensitive internal deliberations. Now, this story was first reported by Axios, and that Politico article that we just read corroborated the details of that initial report from Axios. And Politico is confirming that the holding up of these munitions isn't due to supply chain issues or anything like that. Rather, they're holding it up for political reasons, i.e., because of Israel's offensive in Rafa. Now, someone from the White House basically said, hold, when they were about to be shipped out. And the State Department isn't saying why that's happening, but we can kind of put two and two together and assume it's because Israel defied the United States and maybe after a hundred times defying them in the course of seven months, Joe Biden is finally saying enough is enough. Now, it's a good sign, but before you give Biden credit, hold. Because if this delay is only temporary, then this is really much ado about nothing. But if this is actually the beginning of the end of the United States supplying weapons to Israel for genocide, that's a really positive development. But at this point, it's too early to tell. And I say this because Biden has demonstrated that he can't be trusted on this particular issue. But I genuinely hope that he proves me wrong. However, I'm skeptical about that still, even with this news. Because the State Department was expected to release a report on whether or not Israel is using U.S. supplied weapons in compliance with international humanitarian law. And it's obvious that they're not. But if the United States confirms that they're not, then U.S. domestic law would prevent us from supplying Israel with more weapons. So it logically follows that they wouldn't delay this report unless they still intended to send Israel more weapons, which is why I say we need to wait and see. So our government is already complicit. The question is, will they continue to be even more complicit throughout the most destructive phase of this genocide yet? That's still an open question. But keep in mind that this is what the media doesn't want to talk about. Hence why they're hyper-focused on college students. This is confirmation of that. So regardless of what they say, keep your eye on the ball and don't stop talking about the genocide in Gaza. Because if we stop talking about the genocide in Gaza, the propagandists and mainstream media win.